Welcome to Anime Club. I'm Meg Turney, and I like anime. I'm Ross Everett, and it's not my slice of tuna. Yum. This week we watched Fruits Basket, which mm, Ross totally picked. Fruits Basket. I picked it just because I loved that there's a plural fruits and a singular basket. Well, because Fruitsu is fruits in Japan, so Fruitsu is like the the title, so then it just sounds like fruits. Like oh, more okay. Than one. <laughs> Oddly, that, that justifies it for me. Fruits Basket is a show about a girl who lives in a tent because her mom died oh. and then uh, moves in with a rat. Her mother dies and, and she's super self-sufficient and she's trying to get through school because of a promise that she made to her mother. And uh, then she moves in with like the coolest kid in school, Prince Yuki. And uh, it turns out that he's got a deep dark secret that he's been hiding from the world uh, as well. And without spoiling too much, I guess I already did. He's a rat. If he gets stressed or if you touch him, he turns into a rat. I wanted to bring up this transformation aspect because this happens a lot in anime. We have a lot of anime where if X, then Y. So like, if you have cold water, Ranma becomes a girl. Like those are things that happen in anime and I think it's really fun. It adds this element of like, everything's going so great. Oh no, someone hugged him. Now he's a rat. I will jump right into my review of this. Everyone's like, Ross, you are going to hate this. Ross is the worst. Oh, I can't wait to see Ross tear this one apart. I really liked it. Really? I really liked Fruits oh Basket. And let me tell you why. Because I love the way it was written. I thought from a storytelling perspective, it was super well done. They weren't spoon feeding the audience anything. I'm like, oh, her mom is dead. It's like, they're gonna show you this thing, show you the setting, let you think weird things about this girl, and then they're gonna kind of like give some character depth and explanation so that you like it redeems the characters throughout, which I really liked. There were parts of it that I didn't like. I don't like the animation style. It's a little too I, I can't even explain why I don't like it, which is a problem when you're on a review show. <laughs> the first thing I saw was like, oh, here we go. I have to sit through an hour, because we watched two episodes of it. I have to sit through an hour of like shining eyes and sweating girls, which normally, uh, if it wasn't animated, I'd be all for. And then you get these character developments, and then you get this cool like Chinese zodiac. Chinese zodiac in there, and the myth, and, and how it's like, you know, the characters start to reflect the zodiac themselves. And that I, I really liked. From a storytelling perspective, I was hooked. I have to agree. I thought you were going to hate it. We actually yeah. purposely did not talk about what we thought until this moment, so yeah. I could be <laughs> genuinely surprised, I guess, that Ross liked it. Yeah. I got so excited when I saw the Yuki fam club. We were like, we love Yuki. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, we got to do that. We got to try and do the Yuki fam. <laughs> and I said, no. Way. This reminded me a lot of Sailor Moon. The protagonist in particular, Toru, is like very like Usagi. She's very driven and she wants to do her best even if it's not easy for her. She's also, she's a little less whiny than Usagi, I'll give that for sure. I loved that she was just so earnest and really, as a kid, when she felt bad for the cat and I felt bad for her and I just wanted to, I just wanted her to be happy. She's a great character. Yeah. I really like her. You could, you can get behind her 110%. She's a super hard worker. She's really open-minded. She's not mean to anyone. And even when this guy shows his horrible secret and thinks like no one's going to like me because you know That's what he was told from a very young age is if anyone finds out your secret They're gonna hate you, but she's just like this great open-minded kind of loving person. That's super easy to get behind uh, I even liked her friends and I thought yeah. and you guys got to tell me if you agree with this or not That if this were live action that her friends the big one would be played by Laura prep on from that 70s show in orange is the new black and and the small one would be played by uh the the lesbian from Orange is the New Black. Basically, it's just the cast of Orange is the New Black. There's like more than one <laughs> lesbian, by the way. Yeah. That, that shows, yeah, boys. But I mean, like, you know, the, the one that's all like, oh, I'm kind of from, the one from American Pie. What's her name? Natasha, not Legero. I thought one of the things, um, Ross, tell me if you thought of this or if you noticed this. Natasha Leone, go on. One of the things I really liked most about the episodes we watched is the music. I didn't notice that. Is the that something is that I should start paying attention to? The music is gorgeous in this anime. It's so well done. I absolutely loved it. It was so tranquil. It kind of reminded me of like a Zelda game. It was really, really well done, and I really loved the music. The story is really what hooked me. I, I noticed that the more I watched these, you could really, I could see past a lot if there's a good story. What kind of anime was this? This is heavily shoujo anime, which is maybe why you don't like the animation as much, like the shiny eyes, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, the, in the first like five minutes of the episode, we see um, Yuki's purple shiny eyes, yeah. and I was like, Oh, they're gonna be together, and I love him, and I think he's so great. But I know that's immediately not something that so, you're super into. Through the animation, if you're more familiar with anime, is there more foreshadowing that you kind of grasp onto? I haven't seen all of Fruits Basket, and so I went and spoiled it for myself because I wanted to know if they ended up together. And there's not as much foreshadowing as I thought there was gonna be. Her 
end up together. What? What? If you guys want to join us next week, we will be watching... Samurai Champloo. A lot of you guys have been suggesting it. Uh, I've also never seen it. I know it's going to be a big change up from Fruits Basket, and I'm excited. And I like that it sounds like shampoo. And if you guys want to watch with us, you can go to Netflix.com slash SourceFed. Gives you one month of free streaming. Helps us out. Helps you out. You guys can post a video response and tweet it at us using the hashtag SFNAnimeClub. We'll find it. And then you guys can tell us what you thought. Just like this. I love Fruits Basket. That's like probably one of the best animes I've ever seen before in my whole entire life. I would totally say if you're just starting out an anime but you don't want to watch something too action-y, totally go watch Fruits Basket. The innocent young high school girl who just so happens to be camping out on this property of course lives the most popular guy in school. Let's just forget about how this whole situation is pretty ridiculous. Altogether, I think it makes for a really cute love story. If I were to watch it now, I don't think I would necessarily enjoy it as much. Maybe it's not meant for me anymore. But it's strange because in anime, the concept for each show is always slightly bizarro and kind of hard to buy into, but then you watch like a full episode and it no longer seems that weird and suddenly you're completely into it. I think one of my favorite things about this is that most of the talking is actually an inner dialogue in Toru's head and she's overthinking the shit out of everything. Going into this, I wasn't sure if I was going to like Fruits Basket, but when I started watching it, um, I just really got into it. I really like the humor. The story for this anime is really really good. Kyo is voiced by Barry the Chopper from Full Metal Alchemist. Toru Honda is Maka from Soul Leader that we just watched. My reaction when I first heard what this seat's anime was. Did she say Fruits Basket? I love Fruits Basket! Oh my gosh! She's gonna do Fruits Basket! I love you! Toru's living with three guys that if she hugged would turn into animals. Psh, totally not. Toru herself is a very sweet girl and you just can't help but fall for her. Just like everybody else in the series falls for her. It's about breaking your shell, accepting who you are, and learn to be yourself. I don't know. I don't know. It's not my kind of anime. It's gonna work for someone. I did watch four episodes though. I felt it probably picked up a little bit further down the road. And like I said, it has the ability to be good if that's your, your style of anime. Fruits Basket is one that I've been aware of for quite a long time, and I've been putting it off because it just didn't look like my cup of tea. I watched the first episode, and I'm like, no, no, this is too girly for me. But I was assured by many other people that it gets better. So I got to episode 10. It's still pretty girly. It has grown on me a bit. So we did such a good job, Yeah, huh? I know. No, 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 no. Oh, my God! Gross. Ow! You smell great, though.